Yeah. Well, if that makes sense, we can try the next part of the question. I guess that's what we have to figure out. That's what we have to figure out, what we need to focus on. Let me show you a slightly more formal way to think about that. What, what, what can we use as our target? I'm sorry, what can we use as our starting units here? Well, let's start with the target, actually. What are our target units? So I can write that like this. And now, what would be good starting units for us to use? Oh, you know, actually. Yeah, this is not the right answer. It's actually more complicated than this. Um, yeah, so let's actually do this together. So yeah, what, what are the starting units that we can use to solve this problem, to figure out how many atoms of carbon we have? So let's be more specific. So what, what was the question? Uh, how many atoms of carbon are present? Present in what? In the molecules, C7H4. And how many of the molecules? Okay, yeah. So how many so what so let's try to be more specific about the question. It's how many atoms of carbon are present in what? And this is a little bit tricky because I, I uh, wrote the question on the board but I didn't show it to you. So maybe you want to go ahead and reread the question. Go ahead and reread the question now. And when you're ready, they're asking us how many atoms of carbon are present in what? atoms of carbon are present, but we have to fill in that a little bit, they mean how many atoms of carbon are present and what. Okay. Now, actually, well, what was the first question? So what, that's what the second question is about, too. The second question is asking how many atoms of carbon are present in a typical bee sting. So what we're seeing here is that every time that bees sting, they release a lot of these molecules. Every time that bees sting, they release a lot of these molecules. And we now are asked how many atoms of carbon are present when, uh, in what they've released. Well, what would be good starting units here? Well, good starting units would be this. 
We know that a typical bee sting has this many molecules, so let's write that down. 4.6 times 10 to the 15 molecules of C7 H14O2. And our target units are atoms of carbon. So this was the answer to my question. These would be our good starting units. So the starting units should be some information about what they're asking you about. So in this case, what are they asking us about? They're asking us about bee stings. So we have to start with something that we know about bee stings. Well, one thing we know about bee stings is that they have 10 to the negative 6 grams of this molecule. Something else that we figured out is that bee stings have this many of these molecules. And then we should be able to convert that to figure out how many atoms of carbon are in there. So this is what I meant when I asked, what are the starting units? These would be good units for us to start with for bee stings to do our conversion. OK, so now we have to try to put in some, con uh, some conversion ratios to go from here to here. This is a good step. We know we want these units to cancel these. Now what would be good units to put on the top? Matthew. We might put in moles, but what would we like to put on top? We'd like, well, we might put in that, but what would we like to put on top? We'd like to put atoms of carbon. If possible, we'd like to just finish the problem. So if there's an equivalency between these, we'd like to do that. And actually, there is. We do know what the equivalency is between these two things. So what numbers can I put on the top and the bottom now? How can I make an equivalency between atoms of carbon and molecules of C7H14O2? What numbers would make those equivalent? Talk about this together a little bit. So, um, if you have one molecule of this, how many atoms of carbon would it have? So that's all we were going for. That's all. We're, so notice that we don't use this number. Remember that the conversion ratio here has nothing really to do with the information in the problem. Um, this is just a conversion ratio. Um, if you had one molecule of this substance, you would see how many atoms we had. Okay. I think that earlier you were guessing that we needed to multiply by seven. The problem is that I don't think you were multiplying the right thing by 7. You were multiplying, uh, so I don't know if you were multiplying this number by 7. Um, so this is the number that we need to multiply it by 7. But the common sense of this is, remember we said that we should have more atoms of carbon than molecules. Well, how many more? How many more? We should have 7 times as much, right? We should have 7 times as many carbon atoms as molecules. Each of these molecules has 7 carbon. So it makes sense that if we have this answer, this answer should be 7 times as big. Okay, so to finish that off. That would give us 3.22 times 10 to the 16th carbons, which really is bigger than this. 